The panel from Hell 6 has concluded and patch 8 has arrived. In this video, I'm going to go over what this gigantic patch has brought us, and the list is pretty insanely long, so what I'm going to do is start off with the big stuff, and then I'll try to summarize some of the less important or less noticeable, more boring changes, additions, and fixes. Once I feel like I've spent enough time with this patch, I will of course do a proper feedback video, and also be on the lookout in the next few days for a Bard class guide. And yeah, there you have it. The Bard is now part of Baldur's Gate 3's Early Access. But before that, I just want to quickly mention that Larian has added another language to their lexicon. Brazilian Portuguese players, your request has been answered, and it's now an officially supported language. Back to the Bard. Patch 8 has given us the Master of Song and Speech, a class that can deal out both inspiration and devastation in battle. I'll go over all of this in my class guide, but one of the biggest features that the Bard gets is Bardic Inspiration, which lets you give special inspiration dice to your allies, and they can use their inspiration die to add to things such as their attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. It's a very good support type feature. I do want to add that the reaction system has not been updated yet, which is kind of a bummer for the Bard class because you want to choose if you want to use Bardic Inspiration on certain things and not just what comes up next. Hopefully Larian will do something about that in the future. Bards also get to choose a starting instrument, and the choices that we have are Hand Drum, Flute, Lute, Lyre, if that's how you pronounce it, and Violin. And uh, these instruments can be used not only just for spells and animations with the bard, but also for the perform, perform ability, excuse me, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. The two subclasses that we got are the College of Lore Bard and the College of Valor, and you get to choose your subclass at bard level 3. Lore Bards are focused a bit more on knowledge and spellcasting, and Valor Bards are a bit more focused on combat as they get extra weapon and armor proficiencies. I should definitely note here that Larian has recorded 97 insults that your bard will be able to project at others. The more you play the class, the more you'll see how this works. With the bard, of course, also comes new spells, and some of which are on other classes' spell lists. We now have Calm Emotions, Enthrall, Heroism, Phantasmal Force, and the cantrip Vicious Mockery. Bards also get their own special tadpole power called Stage Fright, which gives disadvantage to enemies' attack rolls and also makes them take damage each time they miss an attack roll. While on the topic of spells, Detect Thoughts has gotten an upgrade in the sound effects and visual effects department, and you can now cast it from within dialogues instead of having to do it before dialogue begins like it used to be. The Bard class would not be complete without the ability to perform though, and Larian has added the Perform ability. This ability allows your bard to perform songs anywhere that they would like, and NPCs will react accordingly. It's a really fun and cool feature. If you're playing as a different class and you really want this performance ability, currently you can get it by grabbing the performer feat at level 4. The next major addition to the game is the long-awaited Gnome Race. These little guys are adventurous and vibrant, and they're actually the first new playable race to come to Baldur's Gate 3 since its launch into Early Access. All gnomes will start with a plus 2 to intelligence, they get Gnome Cunning, which gives them advantage on intelligence, charisma, and wisdom saving throws against magic, and Larian has also added Gnome Reactivity to dialogues and situations. There's three sub-races of the gnome that we can choose from, each with their own traits. We have Rock Gnomes, Forest Gnomes, and Deep Gnomes. While on the topic of races, elves are now a uniquely animated race. They've been graced by elegant and refined poses, and they also have a more exotic fighting style. There's a few more things that they added that we can see right here in character creation. Rogues now have access to Expertise at level 1, and Expertise lets you choose two skills that you're proficient in that you want to double your proficiency modifier for. The Bard also gets this feature. There's a new hair shading model, and all hairstyles got an upgrade. All 66 hairstyles can now be used by every single race and body type, and there's now a hair highlight feature and a gray hair feature. And we also got 10 new skin colors in neutral, cool, warm, pallid, and blush tones, and Gael has received visual updates to his face and hair. While on the topic of hairstyles and skin, let's talk about digging, even though it has nothing to do with it. Digging has been added to the game, and you can now use a shovel to dig up treasures and secrets in hidden locations throughout Act 1. Where's the Red Prince when you need him? 
Some of the big changes for combat include ranged critical hits now having their own combat cameras. If you score a critical hit with a ranged weapon, you now get to watch your projectiles pierce your enemy in a cool cinematic fashion. One of the biggest complaints since the launch of Early Access has been the speed of combat, and a lot of that comes down to waiting for enemies. With Patch 8, Larian has implemented Swarm AI, which is a quality of life improvement that bands together minor creatures such as animals and goblins so that they can act faster. These creatures will all move at the same time and then take quick turns to attack instead of each of them taking a full turn to move and then attack. This is an amazing update in my opinion, I'm almost as excited for this as I am for the Bard and Gnome. Thank you Larian for continuing to work to improve the combat experience. Now let's talk about crime because there's a new cinematic dialogue that will now trigger if you commit a crime. This cinematic will allow us to attempt to persuade an NPC to let us go, or perhaps they may see through our lies and throw us in jail. This is something that I'm sure I will become very familiar with throughout my Patch 8 experience. Other more impactful additions and updates that I'll tell you about in this first segment of the video include that you can now cast Mage Hand while you have a summoned familiar active. And speaking of familiars, ranger companions and familiars can now gain health with a short rest. Also creatures that are summoned with the ranger's companion feature and find familiar spell will now remain with the party after a long rest. In the sound department, Larian has now implemented sound occlusion. The game now simulates the behavior of sounds coming from other rooms and behind doors. This will prevent some sounds from traveling through walls and closed doors. Larian has also introduced Auditory Attenuation, which is a series of dynamic audio mixing features that enhance immersion by focusing on your actions and dynamically selecting the most important elements of the soundscape. There's a host of other audio improvements as well. Be on the lookout for improvements in lighting, and on that topic, sunlight through clouds will now have a bigger effect on shadows and lighting. This will make gameplay more closely aligned with the light and dark areas that we see in the game. Now let's talk a little bit about improvements to cinematics as Larian has added sustained emotion acting. They've created a library of facial animations that will allow characters to continue emoting realistically instead of reverting to a neutral stance while our main character is making decisions during dialogues. Also Larian has added cinematic acting for the background characters. There's more support for companions in the background of dialogue so that they're aware and react to the drama unfolding before them. I know that many players have been asking for improvements in this department, and I'm excited to see how far Larian has taken it. Now let's get into some of the UI changes starting with the hotbar. The hotbar art has been updated a bit. Take a look at the end turn and flee button. The rest actions are now in a new menu. The bonus HP indicator has been restyled. The movement bar is now circular and indicates movement costs. There's now a button that takes us to the character whose turn it currently is in combat. And you may also notice this purple dot on the hotbar weapon slots, and this dot indicates if a weapon has an active condition. The character sheet now has improved readability, and you'll also see a host of other changes. Larian added filtering to the spellbook itself. They added a bespoke spell learning UI. There's now a dedicated area that shows your prepared spells and lets you add or remove them from a drop-down menu. Spellbooks have been updated so that different levels of the same spell no longer appear as duplicate icons. And there's also been several adjustments such as the positioning of the approval bar and character models. The crazy thing is that I'm not even halfway through the entirety of the patch notes. It's an insanely long list and I will leave a link to the patch notes below. For this next segment of the video, I'm going to go over some other things that I highlighted. Some of you guys might find this part boring as I'm just going to list the things that stood out to me. Um, so if you guys leave, thank you guys so much for watching. But let's continue on and we'll start with crashes, freezes, and blockers. Obviously, Larian has done a bunch in this department. You can now take a long rest at camp even if one of your companions is dead. Your character no longer gets stuck if they get shoved while sleeping. And then there's a host of multiplayer changes for those of you guys that were having crashes and seeing your screens get stuck and stuff like that. There's also more user interface improvements that I didn't mention before. The source of an advantage or disadvantage applied by a spell is now indicated clearly in the target info section at the top of the screen, which is a nice improvement. 
Larian has improved user experience by allowing summons and followers to use consumables from other characters' inventories. They added UI feedback for when characters heal, equipped items now unequip on double click, allied and neutral characters now have a different portrait border color in the combat turn order UI. The sort by latest option in the inventory no longer shows the oldest items first, quality of life improvement. Dragging an item from your inventory, um, there's a lot of dragging type improvements, uh, barter window improvements for when you're trading. Larian fixed the size of inventory when changing tabs in party view. The combat log now shows all the sources of modifiers, even if their addition results in a zero. Targets that cannot be targeted by a projectile no longer get highlighted if you aim at them. That's a nice improvement. The down condition is now displayed on your portrait in real-time mode. Selecting group toggle mode as a summon no longer tells you that the group is too far away. Toggleable passives are now listed in the character's features tab, something that I requested myself. In the target info section, the damage and damage type now displays correctly if you dip your weapon. The temporary hit points UI now disappears after they're depleted. And then I already went over most of these important hotbar changes. There's a ton of changes and improvements to tooltips, which is always nice with a CRPG. The average damage range in weapons tooltips now includes the damage that's applied by dipping your weapon into a damaging surface. Now we can see much get a much better idea of our potential damage if you use the dip weapon action. Uh, Larian has improved the visual presentation of tooltips, which is always nice, and there's a ton of other stuff. Um, we already went over the character sheet. Now there's actually a real lot that I highlighted for balance changes, and those of you guys that have played quite a lot of early access will probably understand most of these changes. The so Kurgrath's gang at Grimforge will now turn hostile if you try to use detect thoughts on them and fail. Wearing a non-proficient helmet, boots, and gloves now confers disadvantage and blocks spellcasting. So some of you guys were wearing non-proficient helmets, boots, and gloves. You can't really do that anymore um, without suffering the penalty. Woodwodes now have a new unique passive, an extra plus 3d4 magical damage when attacking with clubs. And they also no longer wield two-handed weapons. The defensive duelist feat is no longer available to characters with less than 13 dexterity. So I think that's an important change to balancing that Larian made. The Ring of Mind shielding now correctly blocks all tadpole powers. The Rage Damage bonus now also applies to offhand weapon attacks. This is a great improvement. I was wondering if Larian was going to do this. Barbarian NPCs now have the Unarmored Defense passive ability. So that's going to make some of them a little bit stronger, those that were not using armor. The Athlete feat, <laughs> athlete feat now consumes 1.5 meters of movement when you stand up after being prone. Characters now receive item buffs if they're standing within a range of the item's aura. The Muddy condition now makes you resistant to fire damage. That's pretty awesome. I'm excited to give that a try. Tweak the balance of the Potion of Speed and Haste spell. Non-humanoid creatures no longer have access to basic actions normally reserved for humanoids. The Goblin Trader at the Goblin Camp now has more useful items to trade. I'll have to uh, certainly see what those items are. We have changes to Spa, as he now uses animating spores less and participates in combat more. His multi-attack doesn't deal poison damage anymore. Um, also, Myconid's pacifying spores now stun their targets for one turn instead of two. So we have some, you know, changes that make the, the Myconids more powerful and also less powerful. The Susur Bloom Aura now affects the Dwergar's Invisibility spell. Mind Flayer's Tentacle action no longer applies stun, so the Mind Flayers are a little bit weaker. They've slightly increased Spa's weight, so more changes to weight, and he's also more resistant to getting shoved, so I think that's a necessary change. The Flaming Fist now have lower wisdom, and they also have updated uniforms, so make sure to look out for that. Gandril the Gur Hunter now has level 2 spell slots, so he can use Misty Step correctly, so if you fight Gandril, he's a little bit more powerful. You can now get XP from knocking NPCs out. You can't trade from, excuse me, you can't trade non-tradable items with NPCs anymore. Long rests no longer account for temporary hit points when calculating rested health. The XP reward for killing Dwergars in Grimforge now scales correctly with their level. And now on to some of the combat balancing changes. NPCs can now use projectile spells on targets behind objects that don't provide cover. The Wrath Condition now only works when using melee weapon attacks, no more throwing Wrath around. So the Wrath Condition gives you a boost to your melee damage, so obviously it shouldn't work with, with um, it should only work with melee weapon attacks, that's it. 
If you drop a hanging brazier on an NPC by destroying its hinge, the NPC will now realize that you're attacking them and that the item didn't just decide that it was a good day to die. The toggle party stealth button now works in combat, but obviously um, if the enemy can see you, it's going to be a lot harder to make that work. You can no longer avoid attacks of opportunity by dropping items and then moving. I know some of you guys figured that out in the last patch. The owlbear cub now runs away when it's low health. Characters now reposition themselves correctly when attempting to shoot ranged attacks or cast spells at targets that are selected via their portrait. Improved combat targeting and fix the see-through roof during combat with the Zentrum at their hideout. We have improvements to camera and navigation in the chapel area. Spectator's paralyzed condition can now be removed with a successful save at the end of the turn. So that could be kind of annoying when you're fighting the spectator. There's actually two of them. I don't want to give away any spoilers, though. So now the spectator, I guess, is a little less challenging in a way. Um, for spells, additions, changes, and fixes, and updates, we have an added visible timer to the caster's portrait for concentration spells. That's actually a more notable change I should have mentioned earlier. The previews of spells and ranged attack trajectories are now consistently accurate. Rangers, companions, and other summoning spells now consider the caster's line of sight. Summoning and channeling spells can now land on destructible terrain. And Shadowheart no longer allows you to cast Guidance on yourself if this means you'll use it against her in a dialogue role. That's also kind of an important update that I should have mentioned earlier. Now there's a bunch of continuity changes uh, and improvements. You can no longer cut off Nier's head while in lava. Um, stealing the Idol of Sylvanas undercover now immediately causes the druids to become hostile, so be careful if you're planning on doing that. Minthara's raiders will now attack the tieflings at the druid's grove if she's killed early in combat. That's going to be pretty cool to see that. Minthara now celebrates properly once the denizens of the druid's grove have been eradicated. Grim at the adamantine... Oh, excuse me. Grim the adamantine golem no longer disappears from the game if you flee from combat. Some of you guys also figured that out as an easy way to cheese that... Sometimes hard boss fight if you don't know what to do. Stealing in the dragon's lair at the druid's grove now causes the children to freak out, so be careful. Aridin now stops you from looting his dead comrades. Way to go, Aridin. You now receive Auntie Ethel's reward in your inventory if you tell her you'll spare her in exchange for power. Then we have a host of changes to a bunch of items in the game, um, some improvements to all of the lightning items. The click heal skill, which is granted by the Boots of Speed, now actually doubles your movement speed, so that's nice. The salami is now more common loot, all hail the salami. Uh, that's actually kind of a nice change, because I was having a hard time finding the salami on my playthroughs. Rotten eggs no longer heal players when eaten, and also you can't eat roasted dwarf parts to regain health anymore. I'm sorry guys, we don't have Fane in Baldur's Gate 3. Hanging braziers will now fall and cause an explosion if attacked. Um, a hidden backpack in the forest now contains loot. Can you find it? Definitely going to look for that tonight. Improve the loot drop by Cambions on the Nautiloid. So if you guys go through the tutorial, well, you'll have to go through the tutorial area. Try to kill those Cambions to see what they drop. And then we have some changes to travel elements. Um, Larian has fixed the toggle party sneak button, which caused party members to do the opposite of your main character if they were already sneaking. It was actually kind of annoying, so this is a welcome improvement. Larian made visual improvements to make it more obvious when terrain can't be climbed or reached. And then characters can no longer leap off the apothecary's house in the Blighted Village when they should be using the adjacent ladder. Um, I remember a lot of problems with leaping off of buildings, so that's also a welcome improvement. Then we have some changes and improvements to dialogues. The most notable ones are talking to Helsin at camp for the first time no longer causes him to automatically wild shape into a bear. Um, Larian has improved Gale's personal story flow if he doesn't like you all that much after a certain point in the game. It'll be interesting to see that play out. And you can now trade with Dareth in the Underdark, so look for Dareth and see what he has to offer. Then we have some changes and improvements to the camera. The camera no longer points at empty spaces in the cinematic with Nettie. The dead drow's hand no longer blocks the view of your character when you talk to Nettie. So in a lot of the uh, cinematics or dialogues when you're talking to characters, sometimes the camera's will real wacky. Obviously, Larian is working to improve all of these. We have a lot of evidence of it right here. Hopefully by the game's launch, everything will be fixed in that regards. Um, Larian has implemented several camera fixes relating to visibility in the Zentrum, so that's always a welcome change. Um, the camera still needs more work, in my opinion, even after patch 8, uh, especially when you're trying to see uh, different levels in places that are enclosed, such as the Zentrum hideout. 
We have a bunch of lighting fixes, audio fixes, I talked about some of these already, and then improvements to visuals. There's now a clear indication of which part of a platform you have to target to destroy it. So quality of life improvement. As I said earlier, the flaming fists have updated uniforms. The bugbears have panties, okay? Um, the young mud methods are more recognizable and distinct from their ancient counterparts. Philro the Forgotten, who is the drow in the Underdark, looks even dirtier. So you have to see if I can actually notice that. Um, Larian has added visual effects for when wild-shaped giant badgers use the burrow action. So if you guys play a druid, make sure to test that out. Um, for gameplay animation improvements, Will's left eye color is now faded white, as intended. Tiefling tail animations have been improved. You no, no longer flail like a malfunctioning robot when jumping from high altitudes. That was kind of funny to watch that. The create spell slot and create sorcery point spells now have precasting animations. So if you're playing as a sorcerer, make sure to check that out. And we have improvements to the sneaking animations. And I'm almost there, guys. We're almost to the end. Um, for cinematic animations, in a conversation with the person of your dreams, they now show you a panoramic shot of the city instead of some uninspiring empty grassland. So if you guys know what scene that Larian is talking about here, make sure to look out for that. And then just a ton of other cinematic animation improvements. Um, we have improvements to Stadia, so if you're a Stadia player, make sure to click on the link in the description to look over this part specifically, especially if you had uh, bugs and crashing issues. We have improvements to icons and portraits, improve the functionality and appearance of characters' portraits, and improve the way they respond to being selected. It's pretty nice. And then also clipping, popping, and other questionable visuals has an insanely long list here. I mean, what a list. That's actually pretty insane. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys too much with the second segment of this video. And thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be on the lookout for a Bard class guide and also a video going over my feedback for Patch 8. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.